Hi, this is Rob McLean of LearnToCruiseOnline.ca. This is the third episode in the Connected Boat series. In this session, we'll provide an overview of how the NMEA standards enable your instruments to talk with each other over a boat network. There are a number of reasons why the ability to interface different devices is important. It enables mixing and matching devices from various manufacturers, provides enhanced safety by making data available on other devices. It provides for redundancy. If one device fails, the data, underlying data may still be available on a different device. You can revitalize legacy devices. I was able to uh, take a failed uh, depth sounder. Uh, the, the transducer was still good and was able to uh, get the data on the network without uh, having to replace the transducer. We can feed sensor data to uh, charting applications on PC or mobile devices and enable sensor monitoring from devices other than the cockpit. Finally, uh, it enables alarms or performance tracking on a PC or mobile device. The ability for instruments to talk with each other depends on having a common standard. Here's a brief overview of how the National Marine Electronics Association standards have evolved. The initiative began in the 80s uh, with the introduction of NMEA 0180 uh, and followed in 82 with NMEA 182 and then in 83 with the version of NMEA 183 which has, uh, the most recent version is now uh, 4.10. Uh, so it's a standard which is still in use uh, since 83. Uh, and this is a serial interface standard that enables devices to doc talk to each other using sentences that convey instrument data. Then in 2001, NMEA released released the first version of NMEA 2000, also referred to as N2K. The most recent version of this protocol is 3.101. This is a network standard for connecting multiple devices to a common network, and it's based on the controller area network initially developed for land vehicles. CTOC and other proprietary standards are variations on this same theme. NMEA 2000 defines parameter group number, or PGNs, that convey instrument data. There's another uh, standard being developed uh, called NMEA OneNet, based on Ethernet, and that is designed to overcome NMEA 2000's limit, a practical limit, of about 50 devices on the same network, whereas OneNet could, in theory, support 65,000 devices. This was uh, announced uh, to be available in 2014, but we're still waiting. Perhaps it will show up soon. So it's important if you're just starting out with boat networking to understand a little bit about the differences between 0183 and NMEA 2000. 0183 is based on serial communications between devices and was not really designed for two-way communications. Rather, it was designed to enable a talker device to communicate with a listener device. While the messages sent by a talker device can be received by multiple listener devices, you can't connect two talkers to the same listener without extra electronics, since the messages from the two talkers can interfere with each other. NMEA 0183 is still in wide use, but it has this important limitation. That's why NMEA 2000 was designed to support two-way communications between multiple talker, talker and multiple listening devices. As uh, mentioned earlier, it's, say, it's based on the same underlying protocols that enable engine sensors and controls to talk with the engine computer in your automobile. Using NMEA 2000, you typically set up a backbone cable on your boat and use T connectors and smaller cables to link in all of your instruments and displays. With this as background, let's talk about some practical networking scenarios. 
first connecting existing 0183 devices. When we first acquired our latest boat in 2014, I was amazed to discover that I was able to find 0183 adapters to hook up some mid-80s vintage equipment, including a radar and autopilot. More generally, there are a number of innovators working to make it possible for your mobile device to talk with your autopilot. In these cases, I was interconnecting one device to another and simply needed a wire with the appropriate connector to match up with the device. If you need to connect more than one NMEA 183 device, uh, then you need some sort of multiplexer device to regulate the communications from multiple talkers so that they don't interfere with each other. If you want to connect one or more NMEA 0183 devices to a PC, there are a variety of gateway devices that feed NMEA data into your computer through a USB port. There are also, uh, if, you already, if you already have a NMEA 2000 network on the boat, to connect additional devices, it is normally just a matter of acquiring additional cables and connectors. There are also a variety of adapters that enable you to connect a 0183 device into your N2K network or to various manufacturers' proprietary versions of N2K such as CTOK or SIMNET. As I mentioned briefly earlier, a couple of years ago, the display for the depth sounder on one of my boats failed. I was happy to discover that ActaSense offered a device that could connect to the old transducer that was still working and was able to send 0183 depth sentences to a multifunction display. In fact, there are a variety of options out there for NMEA enabling legacy sensors. Similarly, there are various interfaces that enable sending NMEA engine data to multifunction displays and mobile devices. In conclusion, if you're thinking about enhancing the instrumentation on your boat, you should do some homework to find out how you can best use what you have while enabling functionality for the future. Map out the instruments you have on the connectivity standards they support. If they're not NMEA enabled, there may be an adapter, 0183 or NMEA 2000, that will support your legacy instrument. If you're thinking about adding new sensors, recognize that you can now get smart devices that already have NMEA functionality built right into the sensor such as the Airmar Triducer referenced that has NMEA circuitry built right into the transducer housing. As we'll see in more detail in a subsequent episode, there are many multifunction devices and interfaces that can display data from multiple sources. This concludes our brief overview of boat networks. See you in the next screencast in the Connected Boat series.